Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a high-end zoanthid garden. What is up, coral people? My name is Remy, if you're new here. I love coral, I love videos. You combine the two, you get the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. And if at any point in the video, you're like, you know what, this is kinda of cool stuff. Hit subscribe, hit the bell notification, and make sure to click like. Your support for the Bahama Llama Coral channel means more than you know. <sighs> this video was inspired by my emerald crab, Duke. Hello. I quickly learned after tossing Duke into the tank that he was an aspiring aquascaper. He's just like really bad at it right now. You know those singers on American Idol that don't understand that they're just bad and they shouldn't be singing? That's Duke but with rocks. Anyway, I've never really glued down my skate because, well, I have commitment issues, but it seems like if I wanna enjoy this coral, I'm gonna have to glue it down to the rock. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to stare at it upside down on the sand bed. Now, the Llamas Lagoon is primarily softies. If you check out some of the other videos, like my Marine Farmers unboxing, where I unbox the Kenya tree, the Weeping Willow, and the uh, deep water toadstool here, Today I'm primarily gonna focus on my zoas. Now, if you know me, you know that I have quite an extensive collection of zoanthids. The best part is I don't have to go shopping for any zoanthids, I can just shop right here in the frag tank. So, I've decided to make a high-end zoanthid garden in the Llamas Lagoon. I'll take you through how I make a zoanthid garden and even if you have commitment issues, hopefully you can get through this right along there with me. Here's some of the materials that you're gonna need. Safety gear, I cannot stress this enough. When you're working with zoanthids and pallies, there's no reason why we should be risking getting shot in the eye with zoanthid juice or as you're cutting, um, having an open wound on your hand or now that it's cold outside, you know, we've got cracked uh, hands and things like that. There's no reason that you should risk getting any of that into your body. So what I like to use is gloves, safety glasses. Since we're not actually gonna be fragging any of the zoas today, we're just gonna be trimming down the plugs. I'm probably not gonna end up using this today, but whenever I frag, I definitely, my whole face is covered and my hands are covered as well. I don't wanna risk it. You'll need some bone cutters. I use these. You're also gonna need some glue. Plenty of that here. Uh, this comes from the dollar store. This super glue gel is amazing. And this is what I use when I frag or have to glue anything in the wreath. Uh, you also need a bowl or something to put the zoanthids in to keep them uh, submerged. So you'll need like a bowl or gladware or Tupperware or whatever you use when you frag. And then you'll also need some rubble rock. In this case, I've got a bunch of rubble rock in the lagoon already that I'm going to take from. So I'm gonna use that because it's already cured and it's already good to go. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's make a zoanthid garden. I'm a pro at this. You get one tiny little bit of moisture on your hands and these rubber gloves just do not go on. So if push comes to shove, what happens is the rubber rock is going to allow us to move or cut easier than if we were going to cut into a huge rock. So the main thing we wanna do here today, we wanna make sure that we get as much of this plug gone as possible. One of the biggest things when it comes to a zoa garden, and this is just your preference, but I don't necessarily like when the zoas wrap around the plug to kind of form that like ball, that spherical shape on top. I really want the zoas to adhere to the rock and to form to the rock's um, shape and structure. So what I like to do is take the frag plug down as much as possible. So we're gonna do that with the bone cutter. So there's gonna be a lot of cutting of frag plugs today. Now this rock has been in the aquarium for as long as it's been up. So six, five, six months now. So this one's gonna be super easy. It flew right off the plug quite literally. See how tiny that is? That's small, that's easy to glue. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll put that right there. Give him since this is easier, we'll go ahead and you wanna dry both surfaces just a little bit. Yeah, and now you don't have that crazy looking plug in here. It's right here. 
takes up way less real estate on that rock. So we're gonna go ahead and get a couple more on here really, really quick, and then we can put this rock back in the water. I'm thinking we do, we will do the zombie, nice and big polyp, just a big. We should be able to just clip this right off. Easy as pie. Let's give this guy a little bit of a nice, put this guy right at the top of this rock. We're hoping, you know, you give these guys a little bit of separation and over time they'll end up filling in the space, but we don't want to get them too close right off the bat. This one's going to be a little bit more tricky. Let me get as close as you can polyp some sometimes the plugs come apart a lot easier just like this one is and then what I like to do is sometimes you can actually take like half of it like the thickness in half and just shave it right off and we will put this one right over here And then this piece of rubble rock is done. So, you know, it's not as, it's not as uh, clean looking when the polyps have kind of formed on top of the rock or on top of the plug, but that should work just fine. Some glue right in here. This one's gonna look real nice. You might see the plug for a little bit, you know, you might see remnants of it, but eventually it's it's all gonna form over the rock and it'll look natural, like it's supposed to be there. You cut the, the stem off and then you can kind of work your way around. This one's not gonna be as clean, but we can find a spot for it that'll look nice. Now a lot like aquascaping, when you're putting your rock work in, you know, sometimes they just, they fit better in, in places on the rock, so. This one just happens to fit pretty nice right here. And that's good. And we've got four more plugs left. I don't know, I feel like this is probably enough for this one. Maybe we could put, should we put a small one up here? Yeah, we got a small one. Here's a tiny little guy. There's some smaller polyps, which is nice. And this would be easy to get off here. Boom, real easy. And I got some plugs to use. Perfect, that looks great. All right, we'll put this guy back in the water. It's actually taking a lot less time than I thought. I'm a little reluctant to put anything else on this rock. Anybody that knows anything about zoanthids, especially nowadays, uh, the Nirvana zoanthid has become the new Pandora. So essentially, it's a fast grower. I pulled this rock out, but what I'm gonna do is instead of putting anything else on that rock, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a new piece of rubble rock so that we don't have any fighting between those two zoanthids. And honestly, I'm probably gonna wanna pull this out once it fills the rock, and that's not gonna take very much longer. So let's go back and get some rubble rock. All right, I got this piece right here. So we've got three zoanthids left. We'll go ahead and spread those out on this rock, and then we'll go ahead and put everything together in the tank again, and that'll be a whole nother process. Now we're doing our best to get rid of the plug, or as much of the plug as we can. I don't want to take too much more of that because I don't want to accidentally rip a Zoa. And this one is special because it's already, so a lot of times Zoas will do this where they'll separate themselves, especially if they're stressed. In this case, these speckled cracks were right next to a Sunfire grafted Mani that I have in, in my frag tank. So trying to survive and trying to escape the Monty, they've separated themselves. So we have a natural frag here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount another one of these to a frag plug, which I can do right here, and uh, go ahead and trade that with a friend. And we'll use the other two for the garden. Because who doesn't want a speckled crack in their garden? And another technique with using bone cutters is 
Don't hesitate when you're using bone cutters because they have a tendency to slide up and down the frag, the plug. And if that happens, you could potentially slide up and just take out the whole entire polyp. So you wanna be careful there. We're gonna put these guys right on top. And I know that that's not really blending in here, but I really like the speckled crack. I wanna make sure that it gets out front and center. Our little Zoa rocks. There's about three or four polyps or three or four different um, strains of Zoa per rock. So let's go ahead and put those in the tank and we'll see what we get. All right, so I've went ahead and I've turned the flow off in the tank and uh, we're looking at a lot of white light right now just so I can see what I'm doing. A good thing to think about when you are making a zoanthid garden is the location in your tank. Where do you want to put all of these beautiful creatures? Personally, I find that zoanthids are better mid to low range in your tank. So they do great on that lower rockscape. Another thing to think about are the zoa's growth pattern. Now, if you've got like Pandora's or Nirvana's, you have to think about how fast they grow. You might love their patterns. And honestly, I'm a big fan of Nirvana's patterns, but they just grow like crazy. So you got to take that into consideration. Make sure that if you're putting those on a rock, that they stay on a rock by themselves, especially if you know that they're fast growers. And I hate to say this, but a good indicator of whether or not a Zoa is a fast or a slow grower is price. The more expensive they are, the slower they grow. Usually. That's not always the case. However, supply and demand it definitely plays into a Zoa's price. And you gotta pick out zoanthids that you like. This is your chance to curate your own Zoa garden. You might as well put Zoas in it that you like. Early on in my reefing career, one of my mentors, Matt, said that you need to take the color wheel into consideration. If you really want some good colors that go well together, look at opposite ends of the color wheel. Now we kind of touched on this a little bit before with photography and why we use orange filters to block out the blue light so we can get the natural look of the coral, but still get that nice fluorescence. So if you put orange and blue zoanthids next to each other, they tend to look pretty well, purple and yellow. Think about NFL football teams. Those colors really go well together because they're usually opposite of each other on the color wheel. 2,000 years later. So we put this together about a day ago and I think it looks pretty good. It looks like they're a little too spaced out right now, but they're all obviously going to grow. All right, so here's the top down view. We got a good spread. Like once all these are closed up and it's hard to tell what they are, we got a decent spread. If you check out the uh, the two green polyps up there. Oops, got those a little close together. Uh, gonna be a lot of green in that area, but hopefully it will be offset. So from left to right, I'll tell you what these polyps are. So we've got the green one on the left is a Yoda, the white zombie, hyper jubilees, legendary coral, Lime chilies are up there on the top. Little Shop of Horrors is the Worldwide Corals Campfire. Bahama Lama Coral Mutagen, that's unofficial. Ultra Coral Solar Fusion, you'll see a hallucination. And right above that is the Speckled Crack. That is uh, not super happy right now, so it's not open. And we've got two plugs here that have the Nirvanas on them. That started, just to give you an idea, with two polyps. And that has spread over two rocks and all over the frag plug at this point. So, so if you look at the front of the Zoa Garden, right in front of the little shop of horrors, there's a, a vacant space there. And I feel like I could probably put one or two more polyps there. I'll let you know what I decide. But so far, I love the Zoa Garden. It's high end. I curated it myself, I feel good about it. And of course, I will keep you updated as it grows. I've done several videos on the zoanthids that I have in the frag tank over here and we'll link to those above and at the end of the video as well if you wanna see some more zoanthids. But I wanna know what's your favorite zoanthid? What is the zoanthid that you wish you had in your tank right now? Go ahead and comment below. And if you're anti-name, which there are people out there that hate the fact that zoanthids are named, just give me your favorite colors. What color of zoanthid do you like? Go ahead and comment below. Zoanthid. If you enjoyed yourself during this video and you learned something, maybe it's just a tiny little nugget, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell notification, and go ahead and hit like on the video. That would be awesome. That would really mean a lot to me. And of course, you're supporting the channel when you do that. See that big pile of stuff back there? That's all mail that I need to open boxes and things like that. Lots of goodies, really. You wanna open one? Let's open one. All right, I gotta be honest. I 
kind of already opened this because I was curious, so it's not really a mail time. But I got this black box and I used the scope from this box in the last video on how to take better photos of your coral. And uh, this is from Polyp Lab. It says, hey, you're awesome. Yeah, we like what you're doing, keep it up. Hashtag Polyp Lab. So, uh, <clears throat> I love Reefroids. I use Reefroids. This is awesome. That's a huge, huge um, thank you. And of course, after this video, <laughs> where I use cheap super glue gel, of course, they send me coral frag glue, which I'm sure is a lot better. Polyp Booster. This stuff is awesome too. And then uh, I've already taken this out of the box, guys. If you want to take some cool photos? or check out what's going on in your tank at night. That. Well, after that, Polyp Lab is never going to send me stuff ever again.